Okay, so in the last episode, the last episode, um, we finished parts 7 through 13, or parts 8 through 13. Um, basically, what happened was that the heirs had successfully dominated Fundament, and because of the heirs' actions, the worms can now escape Fundament, a wound leading to geostationary orbit. Behold, we are faithful to our covenant. We slash the worms have no future on Fundament, but Fundament's moons will make fine habitats. Let us rise. Okay, now we are on part 14, 52 and 1. Verse 2 of 4, 52 and 1. Good news, the 52 moons of Fundament host a star-faring civilization far more sophisticated than anything you have encountered so far. Teox's ship fled towards the large ice moon, where a species of bony six-armed cephalopods keeps their icy capital. Savathuns named them the Ammonite. So I guess um, Teox had fled to another place. And Savathun, aka Sathona. Remember, Sathona became Savathun after Sathona had gotten immortal powers. Sathona has it named the place where these people, the Ammonite. They seem eager to grant Teox asylum, or the Ammonite seem eager to grant Teox asylum. These people are idiots. We tried appealing to their hopes and dreams. This was largely unsuccessful. Basically, because they are already happy and indoctrinated. The Ammonites being um, not listening to reason because the Ammonites are already happy and indoctrinated. This angered us slash the heirs slash the worms, so we have devised a plan. Our organs or assets detect a 53rd moon in orbit of fundament. A traveler. Divine presence of the sky. So the traveler is the divine presence of the sky, or, you know, the good asp, the good, um, the good side. Anyways, now we know what arranged the syzygy. You will have to kill them all. And to take their stuff, you will have to kill the Amorites and to take their stuff. Once the Ammonite are out of the way, we can deal with the Traveler. Okay, so basically, the Worms slash the Heirs, after they have killed the Ammonites, they can deal with the Traveler then. Do not hesitate. You are fighting the hypocritical puppets of a cosmic parasite. Avenge your ancestors. Part 15. Born as prey. Verse 2 of 5. Born as prey. This is unacceptable. Are you so weak? Born as prey. Are you born as prey and doomed to die by predators? Arx's failure of resolve led us to catastrophe. The Ammonite fleets under Groma Admiral, Admiral Refred have pressed us back to the sixth moon. Once more, we find ourselves burrowing into a world's core to survive. Once more, 
we slash the worms slash the airs find ourselves burrowing into a world score to survive. Savathun, you must draw arcs out of his catatonia. Make him understand that the ideals of peace and stability he clings to are cancers. Brutal, unjust obstacles between us and a fair cosmos. Alright, so, um, his ideals that arcs things up are brutal, unjust obstacles between us and a fair cosmos. These are the bait stars the sky uses to blind its slaves. Or these are the philosophies the sky uses to blind its slaves. Remember, there's the deep and the sky. Basically, um, the deep are the enemies of the sky, and the sky are the enemies of the deep. It's like, you know, um, like the equivalent between the minions of hell and the minions of heaven. The minions of hell are trying to bring down the minions of heaven. So, you know, it's kind of like that. Anyways, war is the natural wish. War is the natural rectification of inequality. The universe's way of pursuing equilibrium is through war or basically survival of the fittest. Sivu Barath. This, remember, this person is um, Exiro. Exiro became Ziva Arath. Ziva Arath. You cannot defeat the Ammonites and Teogs in line combat. We slash the worms propose new tactics. Braid your armies back to strength and find a way to disperse the brutes across these many moons. If we cannot defeat their strengths, we will infect their weakness. Okay, so like, let me just bring you up to speed about what's going on. There are the heirs and there are the worms. The worms being extremely powerful beings slash immortal. The worms were once held, or the worms were once trapped in fundament, and they were trapped there for a reason, I suppose, because the worms are too powerful. But the worms were trapped in fundament for a reason. Let's suppose that. Then, all of a sudden, the heirs came and supposedly freed the worms. And the worms gave the heirs immortal powers. So now the heirs have immortal powers because of the worms. Anyways, basically the worms are have like this secret mastermind plan of just taking over the entire world, trying to seem as being good be good entities, but they're not actually. Anyways, part. 16. The Sword Logic Verse 2 of 6. The Sword Logic At last, we knew curiosity would draw you back, Arcs. In their desperation, in the Ammonite's desperation, the Ammonite have begun using paracausal weapons. I guess these are lower tiered weapons. What are these? How do these paracausal weapons work? Wouldn't you like to know? Suffice to say that some powers in this universe are superordinate to mere material physics. The source of these weapons is the traveler. So basically the source of the the source of these paracausal weapons Alien weapons, the source of these weapons is the Traveler, the sky's bait star. 
The Paracausal Weapon's effects are su subtle, but they are devastating. But you are armed to respond in kind. Savathun's mothers have listened carefully to our teachings. We will not give you the deep king arcs. That power is for us, so we will not give king arcs the deep. That power is for the worms, a.k.a. the worm gods, your gods. But we will teach you, slash arcs, slash the heirs, to call upon that force, the deep force, with signs and rituals. Small minds might call it magic, perhaps black magic. You are no longer bound by casual closure. Your, your will, Marx's will, defeats law. Kill a hundred of your children with a long blade, Marx, and observe the change in the blade. So basically the worms are just baiting arcs. If arcs does this aspect of killing a hundred children with a long blade, then arcs might gain the deep aspect or the deep magic. Observe how the universe shrinks from you in terror. Your existence begins to define itself. Of course, high arcs, we know it was not curiosity alone that brought you back to the war. You felt your own death growing inside you. You must obey your nature. Your worm must feed. <coughs> okay, so, anyways, I think that, um, remember, arcs, um, is... Basically, the former person known as Arash. Remember, Arash is the more intellectual heir. And because I guess you could say that Arash is the more intellectual heir, Arash is intellectualness or, you know, smartness got the better of her. And now she's, now this person is being tempted to kill a hundred children with a long blade in order to get to some type of magic. Anyways, part 17, the weakness verse. Verse two of seven, the weakness verse. You are dead, young arcs, betrayed and murdered by your own sister for the crime of mercy. Remember what you said to the Ammonite Satellite Congress. You will, we will parlay on neutral ground. Savadun's witches have rendered it utterly neutral. No living thing will ever claim it again. The space around the dry moon stinks of rot. Alright, the space around the dry moon stinks of rot, I guess because of their actions. This is good. This is right. You will learn from this. I guess they're talking to Arcs. Arcs will learn from this. Don't you understand a great king, as in referring to King Arcs? Don't you want to build something real, something that lasts forever? Our universe gutters down towards gold entropy. Life is an engine that burns up energy and produces decay. Life builds selfish, stupid rules. Morality is one of these selfish, stupid rules. And the sanctity of life is another. These rules are impediments to the great work. The work of building a perfect, undying, civil, undying creation, a civilization everlasting. 
something that cannot end, or a civilization that cannot end, because of, you know, life building these things, and morality being a stupid one, and sanctity of life another one. If a civilization cannot defend itself, it must be annihilated. So, um, these are some of life's stupid rules right here. And it can build, and these rules can build a undying creation, a civilization everlasting. This aspect, something that cannot be done. But if a civilization cannot defend itself, then the civilization must be annihilated by the stronger person. If a king cannot hold his power, he must be betrayed. A king not holding his power, a king must be betrayed. The worth of a thing can be determined only by one beautiful arbitrator. And that is the thing's ability to exist, to go on existing, to remake existence, to suit its survival or survival of the fittest. All that would oppose this arbitrator slash rule is unholy and false. So only false things um, rejects these aspects right here. All the mystery and terror of your ancestors springs from the lies from the lies of the sky and their acceptance of these lies from the sky because they accept, accept these things. They deny the truth about survival of the fittest. Your ancestors endured the most hostile conditions and now you must go on creating those Hostile conditions, I guess. Even unto your sisters. I guess your um, relatives. Creating these hostilenesses against your relatives. Even unto your offspring. Because this also promotes survival of the fittest. Savathun's betrayal is the greatest gift she could offer you. Your body is gone, but you have endured. Arts' body is gone, but Arts has endured. Safe in the cyst universe created by your own thought, your own might, your throne world. From this day forward, Arts, you and your sisters will survive death, so long as you are not killed in your own throne. Even as your sisters press the attack against the Ammonites, the god wave devastates fundament. Trillions will die, but these survivors will never forget, and their descendants, their future descendants, will always be ready for another syzygy. When you return to the material universe, use this lesson to complete your work. Teox was not on the dry moon. Teox must be laughing at you. So these they never found a Teox yet. Okay, part 18. Leviathan rises. Verse 2 of 8. Leviathan rises. The Leviathan has broken cover. So I guess the Leviathan has escaped or something like that. The old priest slash Leviathan is in open space, moving towards the Ammonite home moon. Um, the leader of the Ammonites. So, Chroma Admiral reference. And the, and the leader of the Ammonites and his elite guard move with it. Raphrit is the hero of his generation 
an Ammonite of a perilous battlecraft. Raphrit danced circles around Sivo Wrath. But now, Raphrit has to protect his holy Leviathan. are the um worms speaking ruin grief and ruin the grill lost the ammonite ravaged our travelers work undone sisters of arash open your eyes who made you monsters who summoned the wave make peace join with me in golden renewal Okay, no, this aspect, I guess, was, th this aspect, the worms are not speaking, but, um, you know, like, s the, um, enemy of the worms are speaking. The a Leviathan is speaking, I guess. Ruined, grief and ruined. The grill lost. The Ammonite civil civilization ravaged. Our travelers work undone. Sisters of Arash, that is the heirs, open your eyes. Who made you slash Arash slash the heirs monsters? Who summoned the wave or the god wave? Make peace. Join with me in golden renewal. In counter argument, so counter argument arcs. We ask you this, what has the Leviathan done for your people? Who gave you immortality and led you and led you out of your prison? Who answers your questions about the universe with truth instead of sermons? Find T Tante with Savathu. Crush the Chroma Admiral. Boil the Ammonite seas, and slaughter the Leviathan with, with witchcraft. Once the way is open, we will show you how to eat the Traveler. Part 19 Crusaders Verse 2 of 9 Crusaders It is done. E-I-R e and Yule some, like, a couple of other worm gods feed on the Leviathan's carcass. Sifu Arath has made a temple of the Chroma Admiral's impaled corpse. Below us, Savadun's poisons stain the Ammonite home sea black. The Ammonite's screams flavor the void. The Traveler has finally fled. Do you understand arcs? Do you thrill at the secret Savadum? Do you relish the edge of this truth, Sivorath? Do you see the beautiful shape? The Ammonite occupied a piece of reality. The Ammonites rented their existence existence on fraudulent terms, making themselves happy and fat, fencing themselves in soft lies and sweet apocrypha, saying, we are good, we are peaceful and good, we harm nothing. But this aspect is not aligned with the survival of the fittest. Their golden age was a cancer. They did nothing to advance the cause of life. They burnt up time and matter and thought of this solely cystic, onastic pursuit of safety. They were in favor of the pursuit of safety, insulating themselves from death, making a regressive pocket of useless stability. 
they could have helped whittle the universe towards its final perfect form, when they could have oppositely helped whittle the universe towards its final perfect form. And your people suffering in the deep, you become more worthy of existence. You become more worthy of existence versus the Ammonite. You have proven your worthiness. Look around the sky. Look around the people living not in the deep. Behold the great divide, the battle lines of the cosmic world. We are the worm, your guide. We are the worm gods, but we are not the deep itself. We slash the worm gods only move within the deep. Eventually, you, you shall too move, move within the deep. You shall venerate and study the deep and hunt it in its passage. Will you lift your thoughts to the millennia arcs? Will you bend your will to the liberation of the universe and join us in the war against fighting the sky? We need champions, crusaders. Help us save the universe. Help us exterminate that which would destroy all hope. You are both bound to this task by the covenant of the worm. You are both bound to this task by the covenant of the worm. And you are both bound to still kill Taox wherever she has hidden herself. Part 20 Hive Verse 3 of 0 Hive let us speak to the terrible beauty of becoming ourselves. Alright, so now the worms are speaking about... I guess the worms are providing a backstory. Um, I guess the worm gods are providing a backstory of their life. Verse 3 of Zero High. Let us speak of the terrible beauty of becoming ourselves. Slash the origin stories of the worm gods. In the beginning... We slash the worm gods rode hollow moons from star to star. Harks said become as numerous and fertile as seeds in rich flesh. And thus we did become numerous. Zivu Arath said become as hungry and defiant as tumors in rich flesh. And thus we became cancerous. Savathun said, Drink of the poisons of the worm, so that you might feed on death. And we did feed. This, doing these things, doing these suspicious things, was preparation for our crusade. Aya, we were thus becoming. A mother wizard gets fertility from a mate or from herself. From the wizard, the spawn. From the spawn, our thrall. So I guess um, from the wizard, then comes the spawn. And then from the spawn, and then comes our thrall. From the survivors of acolytes who contend. If they contend well, their worm is fed. And from the well fed worm come knights and wizards and princes. Okay, so if all is going according to plan, I guess, and if the worm is fed by, you know, exploiting things essentially. From the worm, well fed, comes the evil knights and evil wizards and princes. This is us 
and our purpose is liberation. Their purpose is liberation. Our great task is the worship and admiration of freedom. Our great hunger is to pursue and eat that which is not free, and to liberate it with devouring. I it, this is us, we the high. Um, I was going to say something. Okay, so, let me just, let me just give you an example about something. Okay, so there's two entities. There's a sky entity, and there's a deep entity. Each entity has personnel associated with it. Sky personnel are against the the sky personnel are against the deep personnel and the deep personnel are against Sky personnel. The deep personnel have this philosophy of their philosophy essentially is liberating the world. Um, I guess you could say via survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest is not a very bad aspect, but you know, it promotes destruction and things like that. The sky personnel equals um, making things peaceful. I guess you could also say only fighting when necessary. It might seem like the sky is the good people and the deep are the bad people. Anyways, um, basically the deep, they believe in their own God, essentially. Um, and the deep think that the sky God is the bad god promoting personnel to become enslaved because you know the deep believe in their god in their god in the deep god and the deep think that think that the sky god is the bad god for because the sky god to them is promoting personal personnel to become enslaved via not um not going towards this aspect anyways it's just like a weird philosophy but um basically that's what the deep believe in okay so anyways we just talked about the hive so now we're, we are on part 21 and incision verse 3 of 1 and incision saith arcs my sibling my siblings our children are scattered across many moons and we live in the cold dark between the suns what will we eat how will we speak Savathun said Savathun's response said arcs my brother and king I have studied the wounds 
cut by the worm of our God. Also I have studied the manner of your death and return. These two things are the same. So the manner of your death and your return are the same. For the manner of your death and your return are pr predicated on death and the passage through cut spaces. Let us practice the sword logic until we are sharp. We may then cut our own wounds and step through. But Zivu Arath said, Sister, I am already sharp. Look, my sword cuts into another space slash another dimension, and she cut her way between moons through green fire and joyous screams. Three kingdoms grow swollen in this sort of space. Three kingdoms were the gaze and glory of arcs, the cunning and knowledge of Savathun, the triumph and brawn of Zivu Arath. These kingdoms were created from the minds and worms of our lords. They were coterminous with all spaces consecrated by our hive. Through these spaces passed speech and food, and all the moods were bound to close. Sayeth Arts, this is where I went when I died. Let us establish our thrones um, at these three kingdoms that you have conquered. For I am Arts, the first navigator, and I shall chart death, and my throne shall be carved of Osmio. Okay, so next episode I'm going to start on this aspect right here. But... This is the end of this episode.